Tēnākui, Mr Chair. Uh, thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to take a call. Uh, tēnā koutou te whare nui ko tēnē pō. I really want to congratulate uh, the people outside this house tonight as well as the people inside this house who are making this work. So, I want to stand up for the value of organised labour. Because without the organisation and the challenges put out by the people on the streets through this campaign, I doubt that we would be here tonight. So I think it is a matter of congratulation no. due to the organised labour, to the union organisations who right. took this to employers and who said, before it even came to Parliament, uh, we don't need this in this country, this is not what we're about. And so part two is an example of sensible policy responding to the leadership of the people on the streets. So, for example, when the Unite Union went to restaurant brands and said to them, this is not good, uh, we do not need this uh, multiple um, multinational ch food chains to take advantage of vulnerable workers, uh, it was actually really encouraging to hear Russell Creedy say that when the union approached the company about providing better certainty over working hours, he immediately saw that change was needed. So, to quote him, Having permanent staff who stay with us, loyal, long tenure, is part of a successful business model for our industry. So that's, that's leadership on both sides. The people who organised the, the workers and approached the unions um, and then went to the employers and got that kind of buy-in. And then there's the people who had to go further because, for example, although Burger King and restaurant brands who, who own KFC, Pizza Hut and... Um, Carl Jr. I don't know these people because I don't eat this kind of food. But actually, they were good. But McDonald's was a problem and Wendy's was a problem. There had to be protests and demonstrations. There had to be an international day of strike action by fast food workers. And that is a tribute to the fact that people need to be organised. And one of my fears about this country is that young people do not understand at the moment what a union is and don't understand the value of it until they have an experience like this. They have an experience like this and many young people are responsible for this bill and for part two because they got involved, they stood up for themselves and they pointed out that being on minimum wages with uncertain hours, uh, people who walked into these places coming to all shifts but not given any more hours, these people stood their ground and protested loudly and slammed zero our contracts. So they helped us do the right thing. Because we do not live in this magnificent, moralistically pure, ethical bubble where we make great decisions on behalf of the country. That's actually not how change happens in this country. It happens because people will not be silent, that organised labour will represent them, that they join unions and they stand up. I also want to pay tribute in part to, particularly to the work that uh, a number of people have done across the House on the Select Committee, but also to Denise Roach for putting up her earlier Members' Bill, which, would, which had some very clear provisions related to part two, which, would, would, again, were a serious contribution that needs to be acknowledged. Guarantee employees a contract with fixed minimum hours for employees who are in the practice of working regular hours after periods of 90 days' work, unless the employee opts out of the arrangement. Notice where the power lies. It, it, it lies in the employee having the ability to opt out. Denise's bill, which she withdrew when she saw that the minister was um, making public statements in support of getting rid of the zero hours bit of this bill, also had a bill in her bill said, remove the ability for employers to put in exclusivity clauses in casual contracts which forbid workers from seeking other employment from other employers. And I've heard good speeches tonight from right across the House about why that's an anathema. And so all credit to Denise Roach and to everyone else who's put up SOPs, but also put up bills during this process in response to the great work of the people on the streets saying this is not good enough. I just want to make the hair stand up on your head or the back of your neck or whatever a bit. The, in, in the United Kingdom, where this uh, legislation went through some time ago, the Office for National Statistics says the number of people last year reporting they work on contracts with no minimum hours has risen to 744,000. It's increased by almost a fifth in the last year, sparking concerns that employers are turning to this arrangement to cut back workers' pay and conditions. So it's great that these SOPs in part two will not allow this to happen.
Mr. Chair. Denise Roche. Thank you, Mr. Chair. It's my pleasure to take a call on part two 